The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. Hi, this is Mia Mohsen Zia, also known as Mia No Time for Love. Check out my latest book, Missing, available in print and e-book format on Amazon. It's now time for the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios and sponsored by international award-winning author Mia Mohsen Zia of Missing. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on over 40 podcast platforms, as well as HamiltonRadio.net, Diamonds FM, and the TheMikeWagnerShow.com. We can be heard in over 100 countries, featuring over 1,000 well-known and amazing guests throughout the globe, and named one of the top 100 global podcasts in the New York Weekly Times, Hollywood Entertainment News, Los Angeles Weekly Times, Apple, and Chartable. So sit back and relax and enjoy another great episode of the award-winning Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Studios and brought to you by our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international warring author Mia Molson's The Missing, available on Amazon and Paperback and Ebook. We're here with two terrific gentlemen from the... Um, Greater um, South here, we have a gentleman who is a Florida-based singer-songwriter who toured with Roxy Music, Duran Duran, Billy Idol, and The Cure, also with uh, Simple Minds and featured on um, you know such programs with his music on Smallville, One Tree Hill, and Glory Days. Also, another gentleman from the South uh, who is a lead, who is lead guitarist for Johnny Van Zant Band for 15 years, um, hail from Jacksonville, Florida, and um, they're ba- they're based in Lower Alabama, somewhere in Florida. And we got the great South, and uh, they'll be talking about a song you got me praying from Somewhere Lucky Florida, Number right Seven. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a sweet home, guys. And uh, yeah. hey, Mike, thanks yeah, for getting us on were. today. Appreciate so, it. Sounds great. Thanks well, sure. live, ladies and gentlemen, at Plus Studios, um, we got um, beautiful Sweet Home Alabama and beautiful Naples, Florida. The two wonderful <laughs> gentlemen, Tim McGeary and Robbie Paul of the Robert Paul Band. Ladies and gentlemen, we got lucky number seven. Guys, good morning. Good afternoon. <laughs> Thanks good for joining morning. us today. Good morning. Good morning. We're still morning here. Yeah. We're, it's the morning. It's okay, though. We're up. Yes, I it is. The, I already went to the gym already. I'm like, I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is my gym right here. It's like flexing the muscles right here. So here's my yeah, flexing yeah. <laughs> right here for the day. So <laughs> <laughs> you're working it hard, Mike. Oh, yeah, you got to these days. And, of course, you, you guys are hard work in the business. So, Tim, you're a Florida-based singer, songwriter. You tour the Roxy Music, Duran Duran, Billy Idol, mm-hmm. The Cure, and Simple Minds. And your music has been featured on Smallville, One Tree Hill, and Glory Days. And, uh, Robbie, you're a lead guitarist for Johnny Van Zant Band for 15 years. And you hail from Jacksonville, Florida. And you guys have a new release, uh, Lucky Number 7. And we'll be playing the song at the end of the uh Audio interview, you got me praying, and um, also got some other tunes as well, too. When Love Comes Around, Kicking Down the Road, Let's See, It's High Time, and uh, Long Gone, and more, and uh, talk about the album and more. And before getting all that, guys, um, tell us how you first got started. Uh, as in, like, well, how we got connected, uh, we, have, we, have, we have a mutual friend named Mike Kenneman. He's in Nashville. And uh, about 12 years ago, I started writing in Nashville, and uh, I went to Mike's office, and I sent him some songs, and he wasn't really too impressed the first time I sent him. Mm. So, uh, you know, and, and Robbie will attest that Mike can be pretty much like, you know, he can be brutal, but he, but, but he's actually honest, and he knows his stuff. So, yeah. but I, so I was in Nashville for a, uh, doing a... Um, a little festival and i said hey mike i'm in town can i come see you so he goes well you got 15 minutes come on in mm. and he goes uh he goes get a gu- get a guitar off the writer room wall and what i'll do you can play me one verse one chorus or one song <laughs> <laughs> so so i played the sure. song hole in me which he really liked he let me finish the whole song and that night took me to this party at buddy brock's house which buddy brock's a big time songwriter and uh you know he's got a lot of hits and um it was and it was like Dobie gray was there and it was like nice. you know all these all these heavyweight producers and the, and uh and my wife's with me and mike goes okay go play your song and she's like you're gonna play the song for all the i go hey man i'm here i might as well you know you know so, so you just do it so but me and mike are like become best friends and 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 he is back then uh mike was uh managing and tour and tour manager for johnny van zamp band a lot of great stories there oh boy and uh oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> so but he, so he, he said, Hey, you, he introduced me to Robbie and we, Robbie and I, we wrote a few songs up at his place. 
and they were okay, but it, that was not there to blow our hair back. But then, so, but we had, we had talked about like putting a, a record together and he came down to my new studio and I had just put it together in the last couple of years. And it was really good. It was like really organic. Like, you know, we just like, we you know got these songs together. Um, you know, um, it, you know, we just said, it was just, I respected his talent. He respected mine. And we just came up with some, you know, we think that are pretty, really, you know, really good songs. We're getting a lot of great feedback from the songs that we, that, that people are hearing. And Robbie will attest to that. And he's got some, you know, friends that, you know, serious, you know, like Johnny Van Zant and these other people that really dig the album. So we know like we're on the right track. Um, and, and it was great. It was just, it was a good experience. Like, and I think Robbie will tell you that, like, you know, we had a good time, right? Was absolutely. Happened? Absolutely. It wasn't um, pressure. You mentioned Johnny. Johnny's a good friend of mine, always has been, even though he sings for Skinner now. And, uh, um, it, we're kind of, he's kind of a mentor for me. I send him songs. He sends me songs. You know, he's kind of tell me what he's doing. And I always send him songs, let him know what I'm doing. And, and I can say honestly, and up until this uh, particular record, he was uh, always encouraging, but never uh, like wow. I never got the wow factor out of Johnny. So I'm very happy that uh, he really likes the record. And uh, it got, got the, the wow. You no, know, like Tim says, it lets me know I'm on the right track. Right. <laughs> you know, we're just. I mean. Uh, you know, like I've been writing songs in Nashville. I've been writing songs. You know, I had I've had a couple solo records, uh, actually three, and um, so I've been and been in life. And when I went to Nashville, like you know, I mean, uh, you know, because I had record deals. Oh, I'm a I'm a songwriter. I know what I'm doing. You know, blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. and, then yeah. I went to and then I got to Nashville. I go, son, <laughs> I got you know, school. nothing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let me show you how it's done. I'm like, ah, oh. yeah. like so. Um, but it was really great. And the, you know, and luckily some of the guys that we know that were really good, they patient, you know, and, um, I learned a lot and, and it's, and it took me about two years going up there. I was still working my day gig. I was a firefighter paramedic, you know, I don't know if that came into there, but like, you know, I would, you know, 2001, I was at ground zero, you know, at, uh, you know, nine 11 and, you know, in a, with the thing called the DMAT team, but I was a, uh, Paramedic, flight medic, and a par and a firefighter. So, but I would so I'd go and there's and there's a way you can work it where you can do swaps and stuff. So I get it like two weeks off, and I'd run up there about three, four, eh, about four times a year for about two weeks and write twenty, twenty five songs. And it took me about two years to really get it, you know, like you know, um, to like you know, to act sunks in this thick Irish skull, but um, you know, and uh. But it, but it, you know, I finally got it, and um, and it's, it's it was it's game changer. And then the thing is too, when you're up there, because you you're with so many talented people, you know, either you go home and say I can't do this, or you try to rise to the occasion. You say I got to do this. I have to write songs like this. I have to sing like this. I have to play like this. And you get you know, and you and gets and you have to go on your your A game. And I did a lot of shows with this guy, Gary Hannon. and he wrote you know, Tequila Mooks, your clothes fall off and with Richie McDonald, Billy Dean, um, Chaz Sanford, uh, little river band and some other, you know, um, uh, other guys. And like, you know, I mean, when you're next to Richie McDonald on stage, it was like three of us, you know, acoustic shows and stuff like that. It's like, okay, you got to have your a game on now. <laughs> you know, Rich, Rich, Richie would sing. And then he goes, okay, Tim, you're next. Like after him, like, ah, but, but it worked out well, you know. We had like we had a, we had a couple of great shows, so it was really fun, and and that really got me into my A game. And so when we wrote this record together, you know what I mean? It really like you know this is like a culmination of everything that I've learned that was taught to me. You know, I'm not saying I invented anything. I just learned a lot, listened, you know, got my ego out of it. Um, you know, when we we we, we I produced the record here. I had my friend Ray Nesbitt from uh, Ray Nesbitt Audio um uh do some mixing you know because he, he's he's a he's been doing it a lot more he's got great ears and sometimes you know like you have to take your ego out of it and say listen you know what let's get a second set of ears to go over it one more time you know and do so and he did a lot of tweaks here and there and really ham it up and then we had daryl on the drums which is a phenomenal drummer david uh david carlton see carlton uh, johnson is like a phenomenal bass player he's played with the neville brothers mm -hmm. so we had like a really great you know great musicians robbie's doing great his guitar um you know we went through we we did a little different on um, his guitar playing you know because he's sort of a shredder you know <laughs> so i said 
I say, we're going to be easing on the shredding. <laughs> well, nobody cares anymore, Mike. He did get yeah. some in. But the thing I is, got a few in. you did. But mostly it was like, you know, he changed his style and like made really great guitar, you know, guitar parts, you know, and, and lead guitars that like, you know, that I, I, I'm always this thing like, I want to, if you can do a lead guitar part, somebody can hum or somebody can sing or like knows the melody to it. That's a great lead guitar part. And that's yes. what he did. You know what I mean? And he did so good. In fact, he did so good. His friends go, who played that guitar? It's like, he <laughs> <laughs> didn't believe it was him, True. but he did. He did, such, he did such a great job. And so, you know, with his talent, you know, it's like when you have great musicians, you know what I mean? And then you have the songs, you know, it's, then it's just, it all sort of comes together. And, um, and it was really great. And, uh, I'm, I'm proud of this one because this is my first album out of the studio. You know, we've done a lot of, I've done a lot of singles. But not a whole album, and so this is yeah. I'm excited about this. Mm -hmm. it, it sounds exciting too. You worked with uh, Roxy Music, Duran Duran, Billy Idol, and The Cure, and uh, who are some of other um, favorite well, singer songwriters growing up, especially? Well, I mean, we uh, we were the opening band. We were on A M Records. Um, we did the records, and we did a record in London. K Tony Mansfield, uh, he's the guy that did like that Naked Eye song, you know, Elway something there too. Oh yeah, I remember that well, one. Uh -huh. Okay, well, that, well, he he's that's the guy who produced us. So we and we had EG Management. Well, EG Management at the time had Roxy Music, Killing Killing Joke, and um, King Crimson. So we got a really lot of great gigs. You know, I mean, you know, I can get into all kinds of stuff like you know, we Stray Cats. You know, Brian Setzer used to be in a band called Bloodless Pharaohs. I was in a band called Neighbors and Allies. We used to like go to Philly, New York. We always open or you know, headline for each other, depending where we're at. Um, you know, I, Brian was like a friend of mine. I mean, the thing is, um, I had a great experiences, and you know, we did a lot of Billy out twice, Missing Persons went out twice, uh, Simple Minds, um, Modern English. Um, I mean, one time we had a thing that was uh, Blue Angel, and um, uh, the other guy. Uh, Think in a second, but Blue Angel. That's um, uh, Cindy Lauper. And so, oh wow, yeah. okay. So, so we opened Cindy Lauper, and it was, and then the other guy, um, what's that? Cruel to be kind, and oh, Nick uh, Lowe, that's the one. Yeah, I think Nick that was Lowe. the uh, British. Yeah, so from it was Nick Lowe. So we, Nick so we Lowe, were the over. Yeah, so Nick Lowe, that was the show. Estelle and all that. Yes, and you know, and they had, and um, so it was like us, and then Blue Angel was Cindy, and then Nick Lowe. What a great night, you know. And it was like, and and I never, I never heard Cindy sing, you know, because she has sort of that funny, you know, she's like, she talks, like, she's real New York, and you know, had to, but when she sings, it's like, hey, whoa, whoa, <laughs> that girl can sing, you know. Yeah. So and she's and real nice too. So you know, we just we did a lot of um, a lot of touring, you know. Um, Pretty much on the like, pretty much in the Midwest down to the you know East Coast. Not you know more than that. And then so now I'm doing more like uh like when I do um for me if I do solo work I do like a lot of house concerts and I did let um in 22 I did a bunch in um Europe, um like in Czech Republic and Germany Scotland Portugal Denmark so I do that too, and so and then but the thing is me and Robbie like you know we just this is like it was funny how this just and sometimes we say like. Where these songs come from? You like you just don't, right? No just, idea. And they just <laughs> and, and it's just thing when you get the two people in the room, you know, it's just like things like okay, things start you know moving and you know and we you know we change some things and you know and we were like you know where's our egos? We left them out the door. This is like let's make the best record we can. So um, and we just like you know some things like we, the, the the term we used if it wasn't working was like well that's unfortunate. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah that's unfortunate you know, yeah. and, you know and that you know the accordion like you know we changed like that one um you know, when, when love comes around we changed the you know the chorus chorus and stuff like that you know he on Robbie said let's change the chorus to this and they did work they worked much better than what i had so and that's that's what you do when you like and you get co-writing which is great because you you keep on pushing yourselves to get the best product the best song you know what i mean sometimes when you do your like all solo stuff it's like you're like I have a thing they call the lazy line. It's like, oh, yeah, I sort of heard that. But we didn't have a lazy line. We worked, you know, we worked, changed, you know, rewrote, rewrote, rewrote. And then, you know, and then um, and uh, uh, got to a point like, OK, this is good. You know, you know, people will get the message. They'll hear this. There's some furniture in the room. That's a term they use when you put things in the room, like things, you know, like, you know, like a stray bullet straight to the heart. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Wow. It's a visual thing. That's a great point. Yeah. You know, so that kind of stuff. You have to relate to people's minds. Mm -hmm. You have to 
you, your lyrics have to relate the things that are going on in their lives. Yeah. Or somebody else or somebody they know. Yeah. Or, well, when love comes around too, like, I mean, I know so many single women that are like in their forties and fifties and they're like, am I ever going to find anybody, you know? And so that's what yeah. the thing is like my sister who, my uh, sister Annie, who turns, I think she's like 63, 64. No, well, maybe she's six. I'm 16. Or yeah. somewhere around there. Yes. But, but she found love. She found this guy and they're like, they're getting married and they're like, they love each other and they're traveling. They're having a great time. And it's like, so like, yeah. Right. You know, it comes around, that, it comes around. You can be 80. That's right. You know, mm -hmm. so that's, and that's the moral of the story. And so, of course, girls love that song. <laughs> oh, yeah. And of course, uh, there's also a lot of music as well, too. And Robert, uh, you've been lead guitarist for Giant Van Zant fan for um, 15 years. And uh, tell us how you got started. How'd you first meet uh, Giant Van Zant? <laughs> well, my story's a little different. I, uh, <clears throat> as I said, I, <clears throat> I grew up here in North Alabama or Lower <laughs> Alabama, and I, <laughs> After college, I I certainly had a one-track mind. I wanted to be in a rock band and hopefully be famous. I mean, that's really all I had going on at, at a young age. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, I moved to Jacksonville because that's where Skinner was from and the Almond Brothers. And there were a lot of other bands that didn't make it that were from there. And so uh, when I first got there, I was able to, you know, get in some bands. And uh, one band that I got in was playing at the beach, uh, kind of a house band thing. And uh, Ronnie Van Zant saw me playing there. Hmm. I didn't, I didn't know he was in the club. You know, it was one of those clubs that was open from ten to five eight a.m. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I've been there. Yeah, I've done that. Yeah, <laughs> ten people there mm -hmm. listening. Yeah, <laughs> real nice place. Real nice place. But anyway, so uh, after that band, you know, I kind of was doing part time jobs. You know, playing in bands part time, and, <clears throat> and Johnny, who's Ronnie's little brother, called me up and said that he needed a sound guy for his band. Hmm. I said, okay, Johnny Van Zandt. And I said, well, tell me about yourself, because I had no clue who J Johnny Van Zandt was. Mm -hmm. He said, well, my brother's Ronnie Van Zandt, and he sings for Leonard Skinner. Well, I'm thinking, wait a minute now, because I was so stupid, I thought that Leonard Skinner was Ronnie's name. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people thought that at that I, time. I think the gym teacher would have liked it then. So <laughs> he did. He made he made a career out of it. Wrote a book, the whole thing. Anyway, I thought. I said, "Wait a minute." I thought. You know, I said it stupidly to him, and he he laughs and he goes, "No, I hear that, but my brother is Ronnie, and he's the singer." <laughs> oh, so his name's Ronnie Van Zant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is stupid. <laughs> anyway. So I, uh, I said, that's great. So that's how I, that's how I met him. And, uh, I was doing sound for almost a year. And, uh, one of the guitar players in the band, now you gotta remember they were all 16 and I was uh, 22. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, I liked what I did. Actually, I made money. They didn't. That makes, sense? <laughs> that makes a lot so, of sense. <laughs> or sound advice, they say. I paid first. That's right. They'd make 50 a night. I'd make 400, you know, that's the way it went. But I did everything. So there mm -hmm. you go. Anyway, so I, I'm doing sound and the guy quits and he, he says, I know you play. <clears throat> Can you fill in? Cause you're kind of old. <laughs> oh, 22, my 22. I'm old. Oh I'm like, my gosh. Now's a good, Here's I, over. now's a good time well, to show him. Yeah. <laughs> I can see that. I can see that. So I laughed. And I said, yeah, I'll fill in for you, but I don't want to lose this gig. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only thinking of the money at this point. Can I hear yeah, you, Johnny Van Zandt, so what? You're 16. You could be a drunk by the time you're 20. I don't know. Uh, so I, 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 I played along and I said, well, I don't have a guitar because I kind of, you know, I don't really, I'm doing this now. And he goes, well, we'll get you a guitar. So he got me a guitar and, uh, I did that for two weeks. It was uh, pretty rough the first week, me not knowing the songs after being standing out there for a year. You'd think I'd know them. Um, and they're just playing copy songs, things like that. So we're sound checking one day, and I'm 
I'm playing one of the songs I'd written, which ended up on the first record called Only Strong Survive. Not a difficult, just kind of a blues song, but very fast, which mm-hmm. he liked. And he said, uh, well, uh, that's a really good song. I think I've heard that before. I said, well, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, I'm, so I'm I sure, Tim, you attest to that, right? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. true. So I gave him a cassette. It had four songs on it. One of them was Only Strong Survive. The other one was uh, uh, Keep On Rolling and a, a couple others that didn't make it. So we were just sound checking. So we went back to this motel they were staying at. They were playing at a beach place about 20 miles from Jacksonville. And he says, uh, well, <laughs> he comes back to the gig at, to play the gig. And he goes, man. What do you think about being in the band? I'm like, well, what about the sound? You know, I'm still not connecting. And he says, I said, well, what about the sound gig, man? I really want to keep that. And he goes, just do this and see how it goes. All right. So now I'm thinking, well, there goes the good money. <laughs> I'm not thinking he wants one of my songs. I'm thinking, I'm not, now I'm not making any money. And I'm in a band that's, hmm. They're all young kids. Well, I was wrong, and I will fully admit it. First thing I learned was that Johnny had a lot of talent. He could sing. He was, excuse my language, he was just pretty. He was pretty. Mm -hmm. Young, pretty, and uh, girls loved him. And I, I started catching on pretty quick, Mike. And I saw the future coming. And it went just like I imagined it. You know, by the time he was... 1718, we had a record deal, found ourselves in California, went from a bar band to California, being produced by Al Cooper, made the first record, sold a ton, and that was that. And it lasted a long time until, you know, Skinner decided that they could pay him way more than the Johnny Van Zandt band ever would. So, Mm -hmm. and we, you know, me, me for myself, I, I was ambivalent. Uh, ambivalent. You know what the word is. Ambivalent. Mm-hmm. I can't even say the word. But I said, you have to do it. He had a family. What you going to do? I was still young and single. Not that young, but. And so I decided to do something else. So I did something else, had another career, and then, but I always played. And then. In 2016, I made a solo CD, and uh, it did absolutely nothing, but <laughs> what came out of it was I invited Mike Kinnaman from the old days to come listen mm-hmm. to the CD listening party, and he did, and like Tim says, he's brutal. <laughs> he said, man, you sure can not play guitar. Well, that was the first thing he said, but the second thing was... You ain't got no chance if you don't learn how to write songs. Mm-hmm. I said, oh, I, I've written this song and I've written that song. He said, that was that was a long time ago. You got to learn how to write country songs. Oh, wow. I'm mm-hmm. like, I can't do that. I don't even know how to do that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I started going to Nashville like Tim. Not as often, but in like Tim, I got schooled way probably way more than Tim. Because I went in thinking... I am a good songwriter. I've had hits. And I got that respect of, yeah, you've written hits, but I didn't write much at first that was any good. It took Mm -hmm. almost two years before I wrote anything that even got a cut. Oh, wow. And along that time is when Mike introduced me to Tim. So, like you said, we wrote back and forth, but separate. Mm Mm-hmm. But I knew that if we could get in a room, and I kept saying to him, if we get in a room, I think we could write some pretty good stuff. And that's really, I just, it worked. long story short, one day I decided to go. And I went down there and that was it. Mm-hmm. And you got some great music as well, too, from Lucky Number 7. Uh, you got me praying. We'll talk about that. Also, Love Comes Around. We talked a bit about that and more. Kicking down the road, we'll talk more about that with uh, Tim McGarry and um, Robert Gabe from the Robert Paul Band. 
Robert Paul Band on the Mike Widener Show. But first, you're listening to the Mike Widener Show at the MikeWidenerShow.com. It's powered by SoundWeb Studios. Visit online at SoundWebStudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. SoundWeb Studios is the answer. SoundWeb Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at SoundWebStudios.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give an official shout-out to our official sponsor, the Mike Wagner Show, International War Ring, out there in Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast-paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing is fast-paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is illusion and those who love be the first go missing. It's available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Z has got great reviews. In Eve 11 endorsed by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Forge Riley, and Minos. So grab your copy today for Goes Missing by Mia Molson Z, available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at the MikeWidenerShow.com, our 40 podcast platforms, heard in 100 countries, including Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, also Apple Music, Odyssey, BitChute, Rumble, YouTube. Make sure you subscribe. Also, follow us on Podbean, Pandora, TuneIn, and more. Make sure you take us with you on any mobile device. Follow us on Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, and more. And for great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com. Check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. T-shirts, pop, sop, pop sockets, wow. throw pillows, tote bags, hoodies, make great gifts 24-7, 365 for family, friends, fans, and loved ones. Go to Amazon.com. Check out the Mike Wine Show podcast. <laughs> and for more great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com slash Mia Molson Zia for great books like Missing, Once, and Wrinkles. Also, T-shirts, pop sockets, hoodies, phone cases, and more. Amazon.com slash Mia Molson Zia. And support the Mike Weiner Show on Amcraft FM, PayPal, and the Mike Weiner Show dot com. I'm, I, looks like you guys can eat a pillow right now. We're sleeping or just uh, right in the sun, but wow, hitting on the head. Mike, you are incredible. That was Dude. amazing. You're just wow. like just oh my god. We're we, definitely taking something. We, yeah. we, we know something too. It's just like you know this is actually our number one seller. Believe it or not, if you guys want to write a song about pillows, you know I'll, I'll let you do it. I'll write a song about tote bag. What song about that that? What's that? Is that you? <laughs> yeah. yeah that's me right here so if you don't order a pillow right, you know yeah. just let us know amazon.com and check out the mike wiener show podcast send me a message and uh we'll send you links as well too so other than that we're here with uh tim mcgurry and uh <laughs> robert robert gay from the robert paul band and mike wagner show lucky number seven two great people uh t- you know robert from uh lower alabama and also uh Tim from Naples, Florida, as well, too, and uh, lucky number seven, and uh, and and uh, <laughs> I guess we're just kicking down the road here. And speaking of that, tell us more about that song from Lucky Number Seven. <laughs> oh, I, yeah, I wrote that one a while ago, but um, and we were you know, and uh, it was we were doing the song, and um, and Robbie was doing different leads, and I was just going, well, you know, just like it just wasn't angry enough. I said, I need some anger. I go, you play slide, and he's like, well. I've been working on slide, you know. I said, "Well, Good. take it out," and he took <laughs> it for a run. It was like it worked. Per- it was like, oh, "Robbie, you can play slide. You're good at it." So, like, yeah. So it, and that's it. Because there's something about a slide guitar, like you know, it's got that like angst and sort of angry. You know, it's like you know, it, it's good. It was good. So it came out really good. We're happy with that one. That was that was that was sort of funny. But that was that's your first uh, slide project on an album, right? Robbie? Absolutely. First yeah. time ever. Well, you know, because Eric Lundgren is probably one of the best side players I ever heard. So, yeah. you know, I I learned from him, but I never really wanted to uh, challenge him in any way. Say, let me yeah. play slide. Uh-uh. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> but Tim was so accurate about knowing that banging your head all day trying to come up with a lead break when it's not working is, is really stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I learned that, you know, because work with Al Cooper, he was kind of the same way. I like the way Tim wants you to play your leads from beginning to end without any kind of cutting and pasting. And that's uh, really hard to do, Mike. Really hard. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. it, and the oh. thing is, too, like, you know, we, we really worked on, um, like, uh, he, and Robbie did, you know, the, what the thing was to get a lead that starts somewhere and leads to somewhere and works into something else. Like, you know, like, you, you know, you hear like, you know, the, the lead on, um, uh, you got me praying. How it's like, it starts, it's really great. And then like it moves right up, right into that pre-chorus and you just, climbs. and you're in, it climbs. And that's, that's the stuff. Those are the kind of leads that people remember. 
those are the kind of leads that are like they're smart and and he did a great job with that so you know we and we worked on that and um you know and it was you know and you know sometimes you know the leads will work and they say and he, and he would know he goes like mm, that's not really working I, go, I know let's do it again let's do it again but but you know but there was no and again and again and again again and again i know what you yeah. mean <laughs> but <laughs> but there was no really there's no really pressure because it was my studio you know what I mean? right so, so we weren't on a good the, rate Mike. we weren't on the clock you know <laughs> what I mean? yeah. yeah the rate was good like too, right. damn, too damn good that's what that i say but no. uh, your, 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 your studio though, a but... good rate i mean it's your studio it's like it's free to you and so it's like that's a given yeah. just like the studio i'm in it's free basically so it's like exactly. uh, and exactly. somebody wants Probably to use this yeah i can charge wherever i want so yeah yeah i mean i i during covid i uh because I, I, a lot of a lot of places that we uh, write songs in uh, Nashville, they they were closed, so we did a lot on the Zoom. And so what I did is like because to be a songwriter today, and I mean really to do it, you know, like because I you know I do all kinds of genres. I do like things that are R and B, things that are electronic, you know, you know all kinds of stuff. But the uh, you have to be able to like you know write a song, sing a song and, and record a song because these young guys coming out, they do it all. Like, they do it like, all. Like in, in Nashville, like, you know, the, you, the, the publishers, they pay like, you know, 800 to a thousand bucks for a demo for a song. Well, I just do it in my studio and it's free. Mm -hmm. and they love that. You know what I mean? And that's what they're doing. And that's what's going on now. So the thing, if you're really going to do this for a living, I tell you, I said, you get yourself, you know, get yourself, a DAW, you know, computer with a good DAW, and then start working it, and then work it, and so you can be able to like put product out on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. So I work, I you know, I spent some money on this thing called Music Sound of Mission, and I have good friends like Chad Sanford, who's like you know, was a, a, a huge hit songwriter, and um, you know, and professional like uh, producer and stuff. You know, produ produced a Chicago record when he was nineteen. He's he's like a genius, and um, he's helped me a lot. And my friend Ray Nesbitt, you know, that that did a lot of recordings for me. Said, same thing. I'd say, Ray, come on over. And I'd have them tutor me, you know, to, you know, and, and they taught me all these little things, fine things about fine tuning, you know, and, mm. and how I got my levels right and all that kind of stuff. And so, you know, working at it, working at it, working at it. So but by the time Robbie came down, I've been like about three years and it's heavy or maybe a little bit more, maybe three and a half. And so I had I have some studio chops. Now, I, I always have more to learn. I mean, this this business, once you think you know everything. You're done. You don't. You, you, it's like time to leave because you will never know everything. You always something to learn. There's always some new thing out there, new equipment, you know, um, better sound, you know, the kind of stuff for that. You know, you're always learning um, that kind of stuff. So the thing is, you have to have that that kind of thing if you want to learn to be better all the time. And that's and that's you know, for me, that's what I was working on. You know, you know. Just like keep on, you know, keep on working, keep on training, keep on, you know, get on YouTube, you know, call my friends mm -hmm. up, you know, about this. Um, like when Ch Chazza calls up, he's like, Hey, I got this, this new, new plugin. My wife goes, Is that Chaz on the phone? And what are you <laughs> buying now? Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. so, and, and yeah. they're probably like, What's a plugin? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, well just, yeah. That's the worst. Well, yeah, you, yeah. you can't actually, it's not physical, Mike, so you can't see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. I just, I just put her hands on it like most women. Where is it? Yeah. Where's the yeah. plug-in? <laughs> or what? Where'd you why get plug? Why plug? <laughs> what, Where'd you plug? get that? Where'd you get that guitar? I've always had it. Oh, I remember yeah. that. Uh, <laughs> I've got them all. They're none of them were. <laughs> yeah, don't you remember buying that for me about three years ago, honey? Don't you wow. remember you had you had uh, people <laughs> contributing all that, and you bought from yeah. somewhere? Don't you remember? It's like you remind them people like that. I know. That sounds yeah. real good, Mike. She says no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, well, uh, maybe, I did well, maybe I ordered it. Where's the receipt? That's what she said. <laughs> that's it. Uh, what's it on credit card? Maybe I can use that. So, <laughs> that, that, well, yeah. well, well let's. <laughs> well, let's see about this one from Lucky Number Seven. So, let's like see, that. guys. <laughs> I like that, Tim. Yeah, that, that's so, good. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, let's see. Well, that. Yeah, that was sort of uh, inspired by biographical. Yes, biographical for my friend and his situation, and yep. and, and actually other people that I know that are in the Anybody same situation. Goes through this. Yeah, it goes through that. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I'm 
I'm very lucky. I, I married my wife. We're, we'll be married 43 years uh, last November. And we met one time, you know, in a, in a, in a way that it, it was just meant to be. So, and, you know, and she's, she always knew that music is in my soul. You know what I mean? So she never, ever like said, well, you know, you, can, you, you know, you gotta stop because she knows I'll never stop. I can't. I just, you know, I, I, you know, for me, like a songwriter, I always say like, it's like a curse and a blessing. Your blessing is like, Hey, I can write a song, connects to people. They have a good time. If they laugh, they cry, whatever. But the curse is I can never turn it off. I mean, I can never turn it off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, three 30 in the morning, I get some, I wake up with something in my head. If I'm not going into my studio or my phone, just get the idea down, I will not go back to sleep. So I might as well just get up Absolutely. and do it. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, and, uh, but she knows that. And the thing is, you know, we've, ha we've had some good success. You know, I mean, I had, I had William Shatner do one of my songs. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> William Shatner of all people. <laughs> yeah. I know. He, he, did a, he did an album with Jeff Cook from the band Alabama. Jeff, and so Shatner did the verses and, and Jeff Cook sang the chorus. And it's called, it's called Wrong Number. And the, and the theme of the song <laughs> is every time death comes calling, I tell him it's wrong number. Now that. That the guy that sang that was ninety years old. Wow. was ninety. So if that's not appropriate for that age group, I don't know what is. <laughs> you know, so, so yeah, that was. Pretty and, and he's still talking about Priceline to this day. Oh yeah, well, so, <laughs> yeah. this guy. I mean, he and it's he's a dynamo. I mean, he just keeps going. He's Man, like, he does not look his age. That's for sure. No, no. I mean, he's ninety. Ninety. You know? Ninety-one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, 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 or even sound like it too. And I think there was something on Facebook I saw that uh, some of the people are still going. Willie Nelson, well, he's like 89, 90. Chuck Barrow's sure. going 93. And I think Jimmy Page, he he turned 80. Now look at these lists. I'm like, oh, so my it's, goodness. It's, uh, all well, the people are still. It's time the next few years, Mike, because <laughs> we might be on that list. Some of these guys are going to die. <laughs> Hell yeah. I mean, look at like Mick Jacker. He, he runs around the stage like he's 19 years old. Unbelievable! I mean, I saw he's, he's eight, it was like 89, 88 or something. Eighty. And he's 80. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Eight, yeah. So I mean, yeah, there's but a whole he list. He moves like he's Jagger. He moves like Jagger. You know, but the thing is, you know, the thing you can people are living longer now. You know what I mean? And people are taking care of themselves. That's, you know, that's I'm, good point. Good point. I'm clean, I'm clean and sober. I go to the gym every day. You know, I take lots of supplements. You know, from my brain, everything else. You know what I mean? We eat right. We make everything from scratch pretty much at my house. I make good yeah. coffee. I make good coffee now, don't I, Robbie? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. It's the only reason hey, I we can always use some coffee, right, guys? Yeah. Oh, oh. yeah. Let's yeah. have some. But, yeah. Little little ground beans, fresh ground beans. But, you know, so the thing is, and you you can, I mean, you know, and and and, and the thing is, like, there's this whole youth thing. Like, now, this is something for me, and this is what I'm, and I've always believed this, and people think I'm crazy, but... The most the people with the most disposable income are like 40, 50, 60. Mm -hmm. They are. And that's our age group. So so but the thing is, who's writing songs for that age group? So the thing is what they're doing, all this like it's like, you know, like, oh, you know, the, you know, the, the, these radio stations that, you know, playing like these songs like, you know, from way back then, they're like 40 years old and they keep on, you know, classic rock, they call it. And that's great. You know what I mean? I'm not saying the songs are great, but like 40. I've been hearing those songs for 40, 50 years. Like, okay, what's new? So the thing is, no one's writing songs for them. You know what I mean? And our songs, and people, young people like them too, but I'm saying our age group people, they love this stuff, you know? And somebody's writing songs for somebody that connects to them, that, you know, that talks to them. And at the same time, it's like the music is like thing they could listen to and then get into. And I think, I mean, like... And they buy records too. Yeah, and the thing, you know, I mean, when Neil Diamond did a record, you know, he sold two million copies. I'm sure there wasn't... 15 year olds buying the Neil Diamond record. No, sir. It, was, it was the older population. So they will do it. You know, so we just got to write, but you just, you, know, you got to like, you know, uh, share it like in the, where they, they can see it. And then, mm -hmm. and, and, and I think that it will go. And I, I truly believe that. So well, I think I'll sing Sweet Caroline. That's been the big thing these days that everybody's singing Sweet Caroline, even you go oh, to right. um, a Florida Panthers game, go to Jaguars, or even, uh, you know, go to the Miami Heat game, they'll be singing it. Yeah, I mean this, and yeah. the, you know, you know, the I, I, you know, <laughs> on the, the, you know, for the football you know games. I, you know, to this point, I saw that uh, the Creedence Clearwater revival song 
what was it called? Who something rain? Who will stop the rain? Yeah, is back on the charts as yeah. a single. Yeah, so that says a lot about you know that particular age group is is where they are, and mm -hmm. they want to hear his music still. Yeah, the same song. Mm -hmm. I, I just think it's all easy. I think it's getting back to songs, you know, like, like, you know, like a little bit like, you know, some of the, you know, the, the classic type of songs. And that's what we tried to write, you know, songs say that, like, that say something, you know, that have a good melody. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to have a curse in it. You know, it doesn't have to be, you know, uh, totally, you know, uh, egregiously, egregiously sexual. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. some of these, some of the stuff that comes out is like, what did that girl say? What? <laughs> like, you know, okay. You know, that's, yeah. that's not, that's not making it to, you know, I wouldn't want my 14 year old daughter to listen to that. I mean, you know, if she was, if I had, you know, a, a young daughter like that. But, um, so I think that's, you know, that, uh, I don't know. I just, I think our songs connect to that group. And I think, and that's what we're, that's what we're shooting for. Mm -hmm. and, and, and of course, you know, the title Lucky Number Seven as well, too. And uh, how'd you guys come up with that name? <laughs> uh, well, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I just, uh, we had seven, we had eight songs and we, and we, but we, the, the one, the eighth one was like not really ready. You know what I mean? I had some vocal things to change and we had some guitar parts to change. So I said, let's do, let's, let's just do the seven. And then I just said, and I don't know why, but I, lucky, you know, lucky seven came into my head and we get, okay. And then we lucky number seven. And so, and it's just, it's a seven songs. And I think another thing too is it's like, it's how we got together. You know, at Robbie and I, you know, the, how, you know, it's just sometimes it's sort of luck, you know, how things happen. Like, you know, how we even met, how I met Mike Kinnaman, you know what I mean? How Mike Kinnaman introduced me to Robbie, you know what I mean? And then, how, you know, and then how, and then how yeah. Robbie and I got together and then how Robbie came down here. Like, you know, it's like, so the way things worked, I mean, it was, it was meant to be. And so we feel that this, this project, you know, is like, we're sort of lucky to be here. We're lucky we can still do it. We're lucky, you know. And it's one of it's some of the best stuff I've ever written, and it's some of the best stuff that Robbie's ever written. You know, oh, and, everyone, and, it, sure. and everyone and everyone knows it. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just like wow, this stuff and, is, you know, and, so. and certainly indeed. And uh, what else do you guys base your lyrics on? Um, well, like uh, like the one life, you know, the song life. You know what I mean? It's like you know, I'm going to live this life. Don't believe that lie. You're not good enough. You know what I mean? And it's like you know, sometimes like. You, it's a, it's like, uh, be positive. You know what I mean? Now people are like, you know, like, like w w the things that musicians, you know, what families do and everyone will tell you, they're like the worst. Like, you don't really want to do that. You're never going to make any money. No one's ever really fit. You know, you know, <laughs> they're always negative and stuff, you know, like a lot of times, like your, mm. your family could be your worst dream killer ever. Yeah. You know, or, or too much safety, worry and everything like that. Too many right. safety nets, all that. Mm -hmm. Right. And the, and the thing is, See, I, I was never afraid to go for it. Like the Dalai Lama says, you know, whatever you do, you give it 100% so you get the full benefit. If it works or it doesn't, because everyone will say it's like the things that you learn the best are the things that maybe you didn't, you know, you didn't get good at or you or didn't or failed. Right. Mm. And those you learn those lessons, you know, like, OK, I'll never do that again. I should do this different. You know, those are the things. And then you have successes. So, you, you know, you have both. But but you do it. You You jump in. You just jump in, you know, and, uh, okay. and, uh, so, um, I think that's the thing that I've always, you know, whatever I do, it's a hundred percent. I don't know anything else, but mm -hmm. and that, and, you know, and I'm recovering drug addict. I'm 37 years clean and sober. So, you know, so when I did drugs, oh yeah, I did drugs. Seems like, so, you know, and, uh, and, yeah, I, mean, I, I mean, yeah, it was bad. So, and, but the thing is, <clears throat> I'm actually grateful now that I went through that experience with drug addiction and everyone goes like, what? Like, you know, but because I came on the other side of it and the thing is I've helped so many other people that have uh drug or alcohol related uh addictions. Mm -hmm. And so, and the thing is, unless I went through that experience, you know, and, and know what it's like to be powerless, you know what I mean? Uh, maybe I don't, under I wouldn't understand it. And the same thing on their point, it's like, well, how do you know what it feels like? And I go, oh, I know what it feels like. You know, mm -hmm. I mean? yeah. and so, I'm sure Robert can attest to that, right, Robbie? Well, I never really uh, was addicted to any drug, but I can certainly testify that my particular time period was riddled with drug use. 
The 80s were insane. And not only the bands, the managers, the record company, cocaine just ruled everybody's life. That's yeah. just the way it was. I mean, you, you'd you be talking to your artist relations guy, and he's giving you cocaine. So, so. <laughs> and I'm glad that part of it's changed. It definitely has. So, Paul, say things go better, and especially Eric Clapton as well, too. And um <laughs> better with coke. Right, yeah, I think you know, yeah. That's something like that. And, and of course, you know, we're playing final lucky number seven, and uh, and what's coming up for in 2024 for Tim McGurry and uh, Robert Gay of the Robert Paul Band. We'll find out in just one minute. You listen to the Mike Wagner Show at the Mike Wagner Show.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios, and brought to you by our official sponsor, the Mike Wagner Show, international warring author, Mia Molson's The Missing. We'll be back with Tim McGurry and Robert Kay of the Robert Paul Band. After this time, the Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1 800 303 3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention the Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley and I'm an American actress and a TV host. And I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. It's just, it's well written, it's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter, and it's very well done. I'm going to highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia, he is the author of Missing. And I want to give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamoshenzea.com. Missing, available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Hey, hey, this is Ray Powers, and boy, are you in luck. Right place, right time. Tuned in to The Mike Wagner Show. You heard me. We're back at Tim McGeary and Robert uh, Gave the Robert Paul Van with Lucky Number 7 here on The Mike Wagner Show. And, um, you know, just uh, tell us uh, where can we find uh, Lucky Number 7 and where all your work's at, guys. Go ahead, Robbie. Uh, it should be available to stream this week. Um, our distributors have it, and uh, you should be able to stream it on all the platforms that Mike mentioned. <laughs> They're yeah. too numerous for me to say, but he knows who they are. And, <laughs> well, you're going to roll off a few. It's okay. I'm not making well, guys take yeah, a test. I'll try, you know, Apple iTunes, Spotify, um, SoundCloud, SoundExchange. How am I doing? No? Good? Okay. Yeah, you got and it's, uh, it's, then you'll be able to also, it'll point you to a website where you can purchase a CD as well as download singles. And or the whole thing. So yeah, it's, it's, stay it's, tuned for that. It'll be coming. You can check my website out, uh, robertpaulband.com, mm-hmm. or on also Tim's website is timmcgearymusic. No, 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 just timmcgeary.com. Also, too, um, you know, we have that uh, the video out for uh, the uh, yes, I forgot about that too. Ryan. And yes. uh, we did pretty good. We, we got did. like we got over twelve thousand streams like the first week, so that's good. You know, to start with. You know, we because th- we're just we're just breaking it out. So once it starts to break out, you know, we hope to get about you know anywhere from fifty to one hundred thousand on YouTube. Um, I have about over a thousand follow- uh, subscribers on my YouTube channel. So nice, good. nice. Yeah, I've, I've worked on that, you know, for a while. Uh, mm-hmm. So, but yeah, and so and that's the other thing too, because you know, between my connections and Robbie's connections, we sort of got a good, we got a pretty good list. <laughs> mm-hmm. you, know? you know, and. We're getting, you know, and like doing these interviews, like, you know, I, and I tell a lot of people like when, in the music business, I said, listen, this business is about relationships. Yes. About meeting people, being friendly, you know what I mean? Being nice and develop a relationship with like people like, like you, Mike, and other yeah. presenters and, and Europe and stuff. And I've been doing that for years. And oh. so now I, I have it like Robbie will tell you that, you know, I have a D, uh, well, they're in, in Europe, they're called presenters, not DJs. Right. Yeah. I've been around for quite some time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I have friends that like, you know, if I, I'm, well, one thing is they know anything I'm going to send them, it's going to be decent. It's not going to be crap. You know what I mean? So, and, but that pretty much I send them anything or they, they know they'll, they'll play it. 
So, <laughs> so, so we, ha- and we worked on that, but it's taken, you know, that's, that's the thing. You work on that thing of with these people, you know, being polite, having fun, sending good, good product, you know, doing good interviews. And what happens is, you know, you, you get that relationship with these people. And that's like back in the day, it used to be, used to get in a van and visit the radio stations you know i, I remember those days or get yeah. like the, uh, the magic machine or magic bus whatever you call yeah. it bw i know broken down dodge ford chevy uh, i remember those days <laughs> yeah and we'd go to you know sit, go to the very stage and meet people and say hi and you know do interviews but now it's pretty much done like this and that's great but you do you know we, we're all over the world i think we have probably between about 100 130 stations playing it now um we have like a, the kate with caden helped us a lot and then we have a you know uh, this guy Robert Saunders and other people and stuff like and around the world so um, that are you know putting these songs out for us and 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 we're getting great feedback. That's the thing too is like you know you put songs out sometimes and you know it's like oh yeah it's a good song. Mm-hmm. But the thing is you know when we're getting like wow this is like really good I'm like okay <laughs> you know so there you go so and I'm sure Robbie can attest to that right Robbie? Yeah, I agree with what he's saying. I just I'm just. <laughs> I'm just glad that it's it's getting attention, and that's all you can ask for. But you know, like you tend to say, if it wasn't people like you, Mike, nobody has a chance anymore because mm-hmm. it's changed. Right. You just can't uh, you can't go out there and pound the bars with your music. You can, but it's a long route. Long, it's a long route yeah. out paving, trying to pound the pavement to get your music heard. Mm-hmm. This is the way. And then if they like you, then they'll come see you play. There you go. And that's the best thing to do as well, too. And who do you consider biggest influences in your careers? Oh. Oh. <laughs> so many. I, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Well. Need some well, coffee? I, I can help you with that. <laughs> well, I can help I, you with that. I, I, mine are simple. I, um, because I, my, what I grew up with, uh, I would start with, uh, the guy from Black Sabbath, Tony Ioni, mm-hmm. very underrated. I loved him when I was a kid. Uh, moving up, uh, once I heard Joe Satriani, that was pretty much it for me. Oh for my God, time. the guy's amazing. I love his work. Yeah. Uh, I learned a lot from him. Um, but also learned a lot from a kid named Eric Steckel. I don't know if you know him, Mike. He's a, he's an LA kid, but he tours in Europe, but, uh, just fabulous guitar player. Mm. And uh, and believe it or not, I don't listen to a lot of other guitar players. I listen to saxophone players. Oh wow! <laughs> uh, saxophone players, if you listen to them, they they can give you some great ideas for lead breaks. Mm. Oh, yeah. if, if you listen to a song that we have, it's called what is it? Let's see. Yeah, uh, I approached it as a saxophone player, and it mm. kind of starts out that way and kind of goes along like you're blowing a saxophone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I approach guitar the lead breaks that way sometimes because I otherwise you just start sounding like somebody else. Right. Exactly. Exactly. I and uh, Tim, who, right. Fun. And Tim, who are your biggest influences? Well, I have a yeah you know, a varied one, but um, Peter Gabriel, David Bowie. I, it's a great Bowie story. I'll make this real quick. So I used to be in this band called Neighbors and Allies. We used to roadie for a guy named Richard Hell and the Boy Doids. There's this famous club in New York City called CBGBs. We played there. I played there about a hundred times. Mm-hmm. So what happened was <clears throat> we told Richard, "Hey, if we can open up for you at the Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, we'll roadie for free, and you can have the whole door." So he was good for, and, uh, Richard was good friends with the guys in Blondie and Talking Heads, that whole group. They were all that whole New York scene. So we, uh, we get up, go on a Thursday night and Jimmy Destry, the keyboard player from Blondie was there. And, um, so he saw us play. And then Friday night we play our first set and we had this guy that was another magazine, a band called Magazine. He goes, Hey, listen, I'll do the roadie because David Bowie's out there and wants to meet you. We're like, what? I'm like, what? You know, so of course <laughs> we're like, David, you know, and uh, nicest guy, you know, I know other people that know him too, but you know, we talked about, he looked at me, he goes, you really want to be a rock star? I go, yes, I do. Yes, like, I nice. Do. Yes, I do. But, um, we had, you know, but it was really cool. We had a great conversation, but the coolest thing was at the end of the night, he was leaving. He asked the doorman, what's that opening band getting paid? And they go, oh, they're not. And he goes, yeah, they are. He took $900 out of his wallet and paid us. How cool is that? And that was a long time ago when $900 actually meant something. 
You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I mean, uh, and it covered like it was like three hundred dollars a night, but that was so cool. And then I know other guys too that that uh, that have worked with him, and, so, and they all say the same thing. So you know, it's cool. So I mean, I've had you know, I've had really good. I met Mick Jagger one time. He came down because Mike Shreves had a, a, you know, the guy from Santana had. A, we were doing a tracks with him as a um for a record company, and um he and Jagger came down. You know, like that. We get to meet him, and most of the people that are really there happening are nice because they don't have to they don't have to be there you know I mean? because they're they're there you know what i mean and yeah pretty and, much been there done that everything like that they don't have and, to worry about i have to get my name out there all that stuff yeah and, okay. and, it, and if you're like not a nut job and just you know like talk to them like a human being because they are you know what I mean? And that's it. I mean, they're talented and you appreciate that talent. But you just go like, oh, my God, it's, you know, no, it's just cool. It's just, you know, they're they're people and they like that. You know, it's like, you know, hey, you know, they have to eat. They have to poop. They have to put their pants on one leg at a time. I mean, it's the same thing. And stuff. pay I mean, bills and everything else. And pay, like everything else. So it's like, you know, it's like, but they have the cool, you know, job. like I never, David Bowie's coming. He goes like, so he goes, somebody asked me, what is it like to be? A rock star married to a supermodel. And he's like, that's great. Are you kidding me? It's like, it's, 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 are you kidding me? Yeah. No. Yeah. Rock star and married to a supermodel. Yeah. I, I think that, yep. Yeah, that's good. It's to general. Me, so. yeah, How do you deal with such a thing? But, you know, I mean, that, I mean, things like uh, during my addiction, there was a song by um, Don't Give Up, Peter Gabriel. He does something with Kate Bush. I don't know if you remember that song. It's a really cool song. Mm -hmm, I remember, that was, yes. And I think that song really was one of those songs that threw my addiction at the end when I was, when I was healing and, you know, and I was done with it. Um, really helped me. I mean, I, I listened to it all the time, you know, and, uh, still today I do it, you know. So, I mean, Peter, you know, and I saw Peter Gabriel at a concert one time with, it was in Central Park with 200 people, 200,000 people in the park and that song Biko. And it's like, and the whole crowd, went, ah, ah. I was like, Oh yeah. It, that, it was, it was like a religious. That was a hell of a song. Friend. Yes. Oh, that, yeah, it was just a great album. So, I mean, him, you know, stuff that. But, like, you know, then I like, you know, I mean, and I love, and Tom Petty is one of my favorites. I mean, I love Tom Petty. I mean, songwriting-wise, and, and and I think some of the stuff, you'll hear some of the styles that we're doing that Robbie and I are, we have very Petty-ish, you know, I go Petty-ish, yes. like Tom Petty kind of thing. <laughs> because that I love that. I mean, I love the groove. He's a great songwriter. I mean, you know, I mean, and hooks and getting, you know, and getting those. I mean, like, we try to have, I think in this this record, we both we were trying to get the big chorus. You know what I mean? When the big chorus cool. comes in, big chorus, like you know, like, you know, like it's you know, you got me praying, right? You know what I mean? Let's see, let's Woo. see. You know, kicking down the road. I mean, when your chorus comes in, you know it. You know it. There's no, you know, no denying it. It's like it's mm -hmm. there. You know, and so and those are the kinds of people can sing. You know, and that's, and that's I want people to go like when I'm playing, I want them to go like, you got me praying now. You know what I mean? Like, oh you know I mean? yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, and and I got friends that say like I can't get that song out of my head. <laughs> I got I got to put some more. That's you know, it. And, th and that's why I know I did a good job. <laughs> exactly. And then the Beatles too, because you know Beatles are you. If you see my studio, I have this picture of John Lennon. He's like this with a New York shirt on, like this, looking down. And mm -hmm. when I'm writing, I look up there and I go, "It's like you look at me like going, you better write something decent." <laughs> so sure. like, you know, so that's and, the same picture, Mike. Yeah, that's so, right. Yeah, and and I think I've seen that too. And uh, I got to put one up on the wall. And uh, what's advice? Best advice you guys can give to anybody at this point? Well, Robbie, you want to go first? Say again. I, I didn't come through. I, I'm best sorry. What What's the best advice you guys can give to anybody at this oh. point? Oh uh, well, I don't want to ramble, but I would say never listen to anybody that says you're not good enough. Right. Because when you get to not that Tim and I are at the top, but when you get to this level, you'll find out from people that you trust whether you are or you're not. But right. when you're starting out, everybody's a critic, especially your family members, and they'll tell you that you're not going to make it. You're not good enough. Uh, you need to stick with the old nine to five job and work 40 years and have a nice life. But if you believe in yourself and you believe in your talent, no matter what it is, go for it. Mm. That's mine. That's a very good one. And Tim, how about you? What's the best well, advice you can give I, anybody I, at this point? Well, number one is like, you know, like it, it believe yourself. But the thing is, I mean, when it comes down to it, I tell you like this relationships, practice. You know what I mean? Like if you're going to be a guitar player, whatever you're going to do, practice. You got to be great. Yes. 
You know, don't yeah. be good. Great. That's it. If you're going to be a songwriter, you know, work on it. Be great. And then the thing is, don't give up. You can do it all the time. Um, and the thing is, when you're young, then do it. And I was like, well, what about, so what? What happens if you went to college at 26 and the first, like, you know, from your 18 to 26 for like eight years, you, you gave it all you got? Because the thing, the worst thing you can do is go through life and go, well, I never really tried. I sort of gave up. And then it's like, it, you're sad because you didn't try all the way. And mm-hmm. that's the whole thing that, like the Dalai Lama, 100%, 100%. Just go with it. I mean, I'll tell you like real quick. So I had a story where I had this, this lady. You never know where you're going to play in front of. That's another thing. All right. Yes, that's I right. In, I remember that. I was in Nashville. My friend said, hey, can you come in and close the show with me? And I said, you know, we do five or six songs. Like, okay, great. I had done three co-writes that day. My brain was fried. I was like, boop, you know. But I'm the kind of person, as Robbie tells you, if I say I'm going to do something, I do it. So I went up there. We did the songs like that. And we finished the songs. We got the guitars on our back. And seven women and a guy walk in. They go, oh, we really want to hear music. I'm like, oh, man. Okay. I'll tell you what. I'm not going back on a PA. Just sit or get your chairs around a circle here and I'm going to play for you. And I played this up like that and did a song. And I had a couple CDs and my last CD, I gave it to this lady. Here, just take this. And she goes, thanks. And he goes, I didn't tell you, but I work for Luke Bryan. So what song? Really? Wow. What's, what song do you want me to shop to him? So the more, you never know you're going to be in front of. And there's always that famous story, you know, when the police, you know, came in and they played that. Played that show up, and it was, it was some New York uh, um, venue, and it had a blizzard, and four people were in the audience. Four, wow. but one was the biggest DJ in New York City, and when he heard you know, Roxanne, he's like, "Oh, rest is history." So, I mean, it's like you know, I mean, the the thing is, just keep on doing it, keep on going. You know what I mean? And the thing is, if you give it your all, at the end of the day, you can at least just say like, "Well, you know, I did everything I could to do it." I did never gave up, you know, I, I, I worked my talent, you know, I mean, I, I practiced, I worked at it, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, 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 and then have joy in doing it. Like I, I tell the young guys that don't get into the fame part. Yeah. Fame is fleeting. Okay. Music so. forever. You know, you know, the song like, um, uh, this is my, I want to write the classic because that that's my thing. I want to write one song, but you know, the song you can't, I can't make you love me. Bonnie, Wright. I remember that, yes. Well, I did a, yeah. I did a, I did a show in Texas, and one of the guys was Art Shamblin. He was one of the writers on that song. Do you know that song was first a bluegrass song? Really? Yeah. And then the, the and he wrote it with a piano player, and the guy retooled it. So, I mean, that to me is like a classic because that song sounded great twenty years ago. That song is going to sound great twenty years after and more. You know, it's just I like that. Yeah, that's amazing. So that's that was that was that was my goal to write a song that's like that kind of good like whoa that thing sounds great and it's mm-hmm. gonna sound and people I mean you get songs like something or yesterday when people of three thousand artists have cut it three thousand artists and I believe like, it yeah what was like, like the most widely recorded uh, reprise I mean, talking, revise in history or something uh, yeah I mean it's like you talk and it's like you know Frank Sinatra and Elvis Presley it's like like some serious heavy hitters you know. Uh, you know, Barbara Str- I mean, yeah. So I mean, that those songs are just classics, and so mm-hmm. me and Robbie want to write a classic. That's it. There it's you go. Forever. And, and, think of course, we did. and of course, as soon as you guys do write a classic, come back on, and we'll talk more as well too. We're here with uh, Tim McGeary yeah. and uh, <laughs> Robert Gay of the Robert Paul Band uh, with uh, "You Got Me Praying" from Lucky Number Seven, and all here on the Mike Wagner Show will be playing. You got me praying at the end of the audio review, guys. A very big thank you for your time. You guys have been absolutely fantastic. Looking forward to having you again soon. Keep in touch. Keep us up there. Looking forward to having you back. And um, once again, uh, what's your website? How do people contact you? Where can people purchase or check out your music? Go ahead, Robbie. Uh, RobertPaulBand.com. Um, my Facebook page is Robert Paul Band, The Robert Paul Band. And uh, you can uh, send the band a message. But uh, on that website, you'll see links to uh, purchase CD or, or streaming. Okay. Yeah. So that'll be coming this week for sure, Mike. Okay. And Tim, how about you? What's your website? How do people contact uh, you? TimMcGarry.com or come on Facebook, uh, Tim McGarry Music, you know, on Facebook. And then uh, Tim McGarry Official on Instagram and Tim McGarry on TikTok. So, you know, just say uh, TikTok, it's, it's hard because I have so many people that message me and I can't keep up. But Facebook and uh, Instagram is a little better. So say hi. And then uh, if you if you message me, 
uh, Tim McGarry, less like that, you know, we'll keep in contact. And every time we get some new stuff out, you know, I'll, I'll let you know, be the first one to know, you know, put you on the, on the list. And, uh, uh, and I'll put you on the list, Mike, because every time we get something new, because I'm going to send it to you. So you can sound sounds great. I can't wait, Tim and guys okay, looking thanks. forward to having it soon. And once again, a very big thank you guys time. You guys have been fantastic. Keep us up to date. Keep in touch. Laugh, happy back. Wish you all the best. And guys, you definitely have a great future. Have you, Mike, thank thanks you, Mike. so much. Thanks, Mike, for having us today, man. It was great. Had fun. Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention the Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley, and I'm an American actress and a TV host. And I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. It's just, it's well written, it's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter, and it's very well done. I'm gonna highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia, he is the author of Missing. And I want to give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamotionzea.com.
Forbes.com. Missing. Available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to The Mike Wagner Show. Brought to you by international award-winning author Mia Mosenzia of Missing. And powered by Sonic Web Studios. Be sure to join us again on over 40 podcast platforms. And of course, on the MikeWagnerShow.com, HamiltonRadio.net, and Diamonds FM. Don't forget to support our program with a generous donation at the MikeWagnerShow.com. Thanks for listening. <laughs>